before I secure that to the floor, I'm going to put this and I'm going to take a cut right there to that point, straight back at an angle. I want to make just a couple basic points, just a couple things that will make your life easier if you understand these things about tax strip. If you'll notice on the back side of the tax strip right here, this back side that goes next to the wall has a slight bevel on it. That is to give you just a little extra room for the backing of the carpet and that will also grab a hold of the carpet and it stops it from pulling over and out of your gully whenever you're power stretching your carpet. Also, if you'll notice the nails here, all the nails will actually be angled to the side of the tack strip that has the bevel here. This actually angles to the wall. That way when your carpet rides up and over your tack strip like that, and then you push it down and try to stretch away, it's going to snag onto that carpet right there and hold it from actually pulling away from the wall. We're going to just grab a handful, whatever we can, out of the box and go ahead and lay all the tack strip out around the perimeter of the room. A uh, tack strip comes pre-nailed. It always comes with nails to secure it to the floor. I choose not to use them. So the goalie is actually the place, the space between the tack strip and the baseboard itself. As you can see there, I've got about a quarter inch. My very next piece, I'm just going to take it, butt it right up to that one right there. I want to position it exactly like it needs to go, spacing the end correctly. I've got me about a quarter inch goalie from the end right there. After I get that lined up, I'm going to take my ink pen and mark it right there, okay? What I'm using to make these cuts is actually tack strip cutters. If you don't have these, you can use tin snips. This allows me... Marking it with a pen allows me to stay nice and consistent and accurate. I can actually butt my piece up here that I just cut, and I know I'm going to have a perfect size gully on the end right there. Again, I got my piece butted up right here. Now, because this is an angle, I'm actually going to cut my tack strip on a little bit of an angle, okay? I'm going to go right to my corner and just draw a line just like that right there. There we go. Now what that does, that allows us to keep it nice and tight running around here versus having two straight cuts. This is what it would look like if I did not cut that on an angle. And we're going to have a void here, depending on the carpet, that will profile your carpet and will be visible. I want to cut it right where my door casing starts because this piece right here actually curves in. You want to cut your tack strip in a way that it will keep this consistent quarter inch all the way around through there. And hey, if you're finding value out of what you're seeing, Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. There we have it. Thinking about how far I want my expansion, my tack strip gully here, I'm going to just come over about that far here, cut straight back this direction. Straight back is actually going to be an angle on this piece. Before I secure that to the floor, I'm going to put this and I'm going to take a cut right there to that point, straight back at an angle. That just keeps all my corners from sticking, being really sticking way out into the room. I'd rather have pad making this corner instead of a hardened piece of tack strip. If you choose to use a hammer instead of a pneumatic staple gun, at least two nails per piece, okay? And it, even if it's a short piece, you got to get that second nail in it or your tack strip could pivot. If your tack strip is able to pivot, it's not serving its purpose. Working right on around the door casing here. Again, I'm going to just mark it right there. Cut it straight back. Place this piece first. That way I can use it as a guide to mark my very next piece. With that one done, now I have the hole in the center exactly what I need. I can go ahead and mark this and put that piece down. So if you'll look around all this right here, this is how your door casings need to look. With what we've got done, you should know enough now to go ahead and tack strip your complete room.
Be sure to check the description for links to the tools used in this video.